So I know you've in the past you've fought back against the people calling to blow the Bulls up, but now it looks like they're heading toward a major roster shakeup. What are your rebuilding goals? Are there any players who you think that are off limits that you want to keep on the roster? Do you want to prioritize draft picks? Are there any fake trades in your brain that are just floating around that you need to get out into the internet? (laughs) Well, one of the things that I guess is a benefit to your team being involved in every trade rumor for a month is you can think about a lot of trades. I was kicking around a Warriors trade today. We know they've Mm. kind of been chasing down Alex Caruso. Uh, There was that great clip of him talking to Steve Kerr last season. He said, I want you. I was trying to convince myself it was for Team USA and FIBA over the summer, but that didn't happen. So now I'm thinking maybe he's after something else. I don't know if that's a move the Warriors would do, but it seems the Bulls may have missed an opportunity to trade DeRozan at the height of his trade value now that he's an expiring contract. It feels the same with Levine now that he's into a bigger deal right now. So I don't love trading Caruso, but he's a guy that every contender is going to be interested in. He's got another year left on his deal next year, which I think is a benefit for anybody who would be acquiring him. So I would hate to see Caruso go, but I can understand uh, why such a move would be made. And then I think from a goals standpoint, it would be great to get draft picks back in a Caruso deal. It would be awesome to get some kind of draft picks back in a Zach Levine deal. But I look at what the return was for the Atlanta Hawks when they traded John Collins, who's on a similar contract to Zach Levine. Certainly Levine is a better player than John Collins, but the return to the Hawks was second round picks and Rudy Gay. It was kind of just salary relief for the Hawks. So I'm thinking uh, something similar might be in store for the Bulls if they decide to move off Levine. Perhaps they're able to get one first round pick out of it. I think that would be good. Maybe a young player as well, but the big win for them would be clear in the books heading into next summer. So thinking about potential trade candidates, I found it really interesting how the rest of the NBA values different Bulls players. It's because it's all over the place. And I'm sure you've seen everyone's opinions about these players that you watch every single night. So I'm going to present you with some of the Bulls trade candidates. And I want you to tell me whether you think the rest of the NBA undervalues that player, properly values him or overvalues him. Okay. So let's start with Alex Crusoe. Reports were initially that the Bulls wanted two first. Now the Bulls are apparently shutting down interested teams. Do NBA fans undervalue, overvalue, or properly value Alex Caruso? That's, Caruso's a tough one. I think I'm actually going to vote for properly value here. Because when okay. he came to the Bulls from the Lakers... I was thinking he was overvalued. I thought it was just a classic Lakers bump because they're in a big market. We're talking about this random guy who's just going to be okay. And then he comes to the Bulls and he's everything that Lakers fans said he was. Uh, (laughs) So is he underrated? I don't think so. Because at this point, he seems to be the missing piece for any number of teams, which to me means he's properly rated. He can shoot the ball from outside, though he's not going to take a ton of threes. He can guard anybody like he was locking down Kevin Durant for the Bulls earlier this season despite giving up six inches to him Caruso can kind of play on the wing he can kind of be a little bit of a Bruce Brown type character where he's in the lane as well creating for others I think he's a really good player and I think that the league is wise to it since they've seen what he's done in a slightly bigger role in Chicago and then even dating back to his time with the Lakers he's a championship kind of player and that's why I think he's a guy that the Bulls probably should trade and probably don't want to trade because to have a guy like that is important for the culture of your team as well. So it'll be a tough one uh, if he goes, but I mean, I think that guy's properly rated because everybody thinks he's awesome right now. If you could put yourself in the shoes of like a contending team, would you be willing to give up two firsts for Alex Caruso? Two first seems like a lot. I mean, Caruso does miss some time. You know, he was out with a left ankle injury earlier uh, this week. He came back uh, in the game against the Heat, and then Vooch stepped on his ankle, and now Caruso went out again. The style he plays, conducive uh, to injuries, being on the floor a lot, will have that happen, but I don't know. If if I'm a team that really feels like I'm one piece away from a championship, even take the Nuggets. They didn't really replace Bruce Brown. They've got picks somewhere that they could perhaps come up off of, and maybe that's something they look at. But uh, two first-round picks – For a player in 2023, that feels like a lot since we haven't seen that be going around, especially a role guy like Caruso. Uh, But if I'm a sicko and I want to try and win a championship, it's probably worth it. (laughs) Uh, What about Zach Levine? Two-time All-Star, high-volume three-point shooter. 
Been reports about the lack of a trade market. He seems to want the Lakers. Do you think NBA fans undervalue, overvalue, or properly value Zach Levine? Levine is undervalued. He is on a bad contract, which doesn't help uh, for sure. And you have to have confidence in Levine's knees to want to take on a deal like that. But man, when this guy is right, when he's engaged and when he's in a rhythm, he's one of the better scorers out there. 27 points per game during the second half of last season on really good efficiency, basically a 50, 40, 90 guy. He's been approaching those levels during his all-star seasons with the Bulls. But I think you see the way this season started for Levine. Uh, You see the Bulls then going on a little bit of a run once Levine is out of the lineup and that drags his value down to the point where I can understand why he's undervalued. But Levine is a really good player. The one time he's been in a, in a very competitive situation, 21, 22 season with the bulls, things were working pretty well. It Mm -hmm. all fell apart once Lonzo ball got injured, uh, which probably is a bad sign. If like the 14th best point guard in the league goes down and suddenly your team goes, uh, goes South, not great. But I think Levine is a good player, and I think given a chance to be a number two or a number three or a guy who is the missing piece offensively, he'll show up. Okay, last one, Patrick Williams. Now, before Kobe White's breakout, if another NBA fan was interested in prying away a young Bulls player, it was always Patrick Williams. We can fix him, they tell themselves. Do NBA fans undervalue, overvalue, or properly value Patrick Williams? This is an impossible question to answer. Does anybody <laughs> value Patrick Williams? I don't think that. Oh, he's interesting. Really, <laughs> yeah, right. Like, I don't think anybody's rating him all that highly right now. Uh, he lost his starting spot to Tory Craig earlier this season. That's a guy that is a journeyman uh, around the league. He was drafted number four, so the expectations in Chicago were high. He was kind of the jewel of their semi tank uh, prior to the Vucevic trade. Uh, but I don't know. He's a good role player. I think he's a good shooter. He can defend positions and he has looked a little bit more confident and aggressive uh, since Levine went out of the lineup. But uh, I don't know. I don't hear people talking about Patrick Williams as one of the hot young players right now. Maybe maybe it's because we're Thunder fans, but I I still see Thunder fans all the time bringing up his name uh, because he's like, he's a traditional four compared to like a lot of the small ball that OKC plays where you could just sure. plug him in at the power forward spot. But you may be right. You may be right. He's may just be, have become a forgotten man. Yeah, I think so. that's exactly right. Forgotten man is kind of the right term for it. At least last year, right? He shot 41% from three, uh, f- almost 40% during his rookie season. He's only at 35 right now. I think that's going to probably tick up as the season goes on. He, has proven to be a good shooter uh, thus far in his career. But when you look at a guy who's scoring eight points a game, basically coming off the bench for most of it, and he's not hitting at a high level, it's hard to expect somebody to be super excited uh, about Patrick Williams. But you guys as Thunder fans, you were in the depths of draft research way back when, and Patrick Williams was a huge draft name. So I can understand why you still might have some affection for him. That's That's a great point. He was a a little bit above Poku for me, just a little bit. (laughs) 